Good morning, guys. What do you say we get this day started and get on over to the truck? All right, I'm gonna show you why some drivers don't get brand new trucks. This truck I'm in right now, I have to move it and unhook it from the trailer it's under so I can rehook it to my truck. This truck was brand new last year, given to one of the drivers here. It's a 2017 Volvo. Brand new, all right? This is how he treats it. This is how he treats it, right here. Just take a look. Look at the cigar ashes. Look how dirty that is. Cigar ashes everywhere. Just everywhere. I mean, it's just a mess. I won't even show you the sleeper quarters because, well, no, it's just kind of mean, but look at this. Look at that. That is disgusting. This truck was literally brand new. My truck is a 2012 with 600 and almost 650,000 miles on it. And the interior on that truck looks brand new compared to this. I mean, I I wipe that interior down like probably twice a week with uh, Armor All wipes. You know, and I vacuum the carpet and, oh jeez, that's unbelievable, unbelievable. This right here goes to show why, you know, so many, uh, yeah, I'm dark. This goes to why, show why so many, a lot of places don't allow truck drivers to use their bathroom anymore because you got this kind of you know if they do this to their own truck then what are they going to do in the bathroom just a bit of a comparison here's my truck that's five years well almost uh six years old now this is my truck and to me this is even dirty i need to wipe this down a little bit but just check this out see look how clean that is right there you can see little specks of dust you know, but I mean, granted, this thing has, you know, 642,000 miles. So you got spots on the steering wheel that don't look very good because it's worn out. You know, you got, you know, all that crap, you know, just from people holding on to the steering wheel for so long. So, of course, you know, the dash and, you know, where you put your hands and stuff, you know, that's going to wear out when you, got, when, you, when you have almost 650,000 miles of drive time behind it. But look how much cleaner this is. Look at this. It looks brand new, other than, like I said, just every now and again you'll see a wear spot. You know, like right, like kind of like right here, you can kind of see where it's a little discolored. You know, stuff like that. But man, I keep this thing way clean. You know, I mean, that, that fake wood, that faux wood, it still shines like new. You know, look at it over there. That looks like a brand new section of dash. You know, the door's new, it looks new. I mean, other than the check engine light being on right now, but that's not really... An issue right now um, but yeah I mean look how it's just so much cleaner so much cleaner and this thing is this thing's not a new truck you know even my carpet look I mean it could, yeah, okay I can use a vacuuming I'll give you that <laughs> yeah I'll get my vacuum out here but you know holy cow just goes to show how some drivers take care of their trucks I take care of my truck like it's my house I take care of it because I live in it throughout the week. You know, I, I, I want it to be clean. You know, I'll admit, I didn't used to be that way. I, I, I used to, you know, when I was a new driver, I wasn't the best about it. But I'm really anal about keeping my truck clean now because I understand it's my house on the road. And I gotta look at it that way. That's how we all have to look at it. And that's how we all have to behave out here if we wanna be respected at, at uh, uh, places like receivers and shippers so that we're allowed to use their bathrooms and use their facilities. Because if they got any kind of a look at at the how or as to how some people treat their their own trucks it's obvious as to why they don't want us to use their bathrooms this is my little vacuum now it's time See how clean this thing is, like I was saying? So I just vacuum the carpet. You got the little strands from this carpet here. The dirt's picked up. Dash is clean. 
look at that i mean you would never guess by looking at this video that this truck is six years old you know because it's taken care of i clean this dash vigorously you know i even get up there so to have a truck that's essentially brand new look worse than a truck that's six years old there's no reason for it I don't mean to harp on it but I didn't used to be the best either I really didn't uh, I got uh, I, I got dealt with because of it um, but you know I, I you know I was I, I learned my ways you know I, I, I learned how crappy that was to have a dirty truck and how disrespectful it is to the company that provides you with a nice truck you know um, you know when you're given a brand new truck you need to respect that truck and respect the company that gave it to you they didn't have to give you a brand new truck so I don't know I sure as hell wouldn't uh, tolerate that if I owned a trucking company and I had somebody leave a mess like that in my truck I just wouldn't do it um, there was a uh, at my last company that I worked for at BD transportation uh, the only thing they allowed to be dirty was the floors because we you know we did a lot of dropping in dirty parking lots and especially during the winter time you know you track you know wet snow and wet dirty snow in there you know whatnot um, so they understood that but if you left trash in your truck if they walked around the yard and uh, you know to put permits or something like that in the truck and they see that your truck isn't clean on the inside you'll hear about it and after a couple two or three times it's a uh, fire you so you know because they provide nice trucks they you know everybody there pretty much had a brand new truck um, and I don't blame them for being that anal about it because these aren't cheap these trucks are not cheap and when you go out of your way to provide your drivers with top-of-the-line equipment the drivers should at least at the very least return that favor by keeping it clean and orderly so to speak I mean yeah I've got you know my it's not the most organized in here you know I've got my I've got my vacuum right there you know I've got my foreman up there got some chia seeds up here for my for my smoothies and things like that but nothing is broken nothing is dirty I mean, if I were to move out of this truck and pull everything out, I wouldn't have to do any cleaning. You know, the it's just, you know, something like I got my, my winter coat stuffed up there. I got some paper towels right there. You know, so it may not look the most organized, but the truck is clean. You know, I mean, I've got some baskets up there. That I try to somewhat organize. I've got you know paper plates and plastic ware and canned uh, vegetables and things like that up there. Um, and of course I got my bed down here, which does need to be made. But again, none of this stuff equates to absolutely destroying your truck. You know, I mean, I, all I got to do is make my bed. I don't know. I, I again, like I said before, we wonder why some some uh receivers or shippers don't let us use their bathroom or any other facilities well if they had even half a clue as to how some drivers treat their own truck that they live in then it's pretty obvious why they don't let us and don't get me wrong it pisses me off when i go somewhere and they don't let me use their bathroom especially if i'm there for hours um to me i think that's just inhumane but you know if if they've had numerous drivers go in there and and just destroy it what choice do they have and if you're gonna destroy the inside of a brand new truck that you live in who's to say you're not gonna destroy their property so you know we really got to get our act together out here sometimes and you know a clean truck a clean truck says a lot about the driver it, you know that's why like you know I'm I'm anxious to get the front of this truck fixed up after that guy backed into me because 
you know, I don't like the fact that I have damage on my truck because people, the very first thing people are going to assume when they see you pull in is that you caused that damage. And when they think that, they think that you're a bad driver. And it's just, it just, it's just a, I don't know, it's just a bad, um, you know, it, it's not, it's not a good um, first impression. And your truck, as a truck driver, your truck is your first impression every time you pull into a shipper or a receiver. Um, you know, you want to make sure that your truck says something good about you, uh, not something bad, you know? So, uh, and I, I'm not saying you have to have a brand new truck or anything like that, but, you know, just do what you can to keep it clean and on the inside and the outside. Granted, very few people will see the inside compared to the outside, but if your truck is at the yard uh, and, you know, your boss or somebody has to move your truck, take pride in knowing that if somebody has to move your truck, that they'll get into a truck that's clean and you know that they will be impressed by how clean the inside of your truck is you know my my boss actually told me she couldn't believe how clean this truck was for as old as it was when she got into it and moved it and that made me feel good because that means i was doing my part and keeping a six-year-old truck looking good you know and uh it's just that's just the way it is you know you really got it you've got to stay on top of it you've got to keep your truck clean get some wipes get some armor all wipes in your truck and keep that sucker clean wipe it wipe down the interior a couple times a week you know uh bring a vacuum with you vacuum the carpets uh shake out the rugs you know do what you have to do to keep it clean and keep it you know keep it comfortable that's what this is all about you got to stay comfortable and you know you want to make a good first impression on anybody that seems to for whatever reason needs to get into your truck and again with the outside you want to keep it as clean as you can you know, uh, so that, you know, when people see you pull into their parking lot, they aren't scared that you're going to back into their equipment. You know, again, I mean, your truck says an awful lot about your driving skills. It just does. It says an awful lot about who you are as a driver. You cannot get around that. The truck is our business suit, so to speak. You know, you pull in, this is what they see. This is the very first impression that anybody has on you as a driver. The truck says a lot about you. So keep that in mind. I won't keep I won't keep harping on it. I just wanted to make that point, especially to anybody that's new out there, any new drivers, because, you know, I make these videos. I mean, you know, I was thinking about it earlier. You know, I, obviously I, I make these videos for the drivers to be more so than the drivers that are, because everybody that's out here driving a truck, we know what goes into driving a truck. We know what we need to do. We know what goes on on a day-to-day -day basis out here. But the drivers that are not driving yet, and are thinking about joining the industry they're the ones that need to see these kinds of videos and understand what it takes and understand what they have to do to be seen as a good driver and to gain respect from their peers you know and you know by peers I mean anybody out here on the road anybody that they come in contact with on a day-to-day -day basis so that's really all I have to say about it, guys. Uh, just really, you know, it's important. It, you know, truck hygiene, not just not just your hygiene, not just your personal hygiene, but truck hygiene. That's also hashtag truck hygiene. There we go. Hashtag truck hygiene. Keep that truck clean. Keep it smelling good on the inside. Get some get some spray. Do whatever you have to do to keep it clean on the inside and on the outside. And you know. It honestly goes further than you might think. They're loading me right now, shaking around. So, all right, we're going to get finished getting loaded here and uh, we'll get back on the road.
I'm here at my receiver, so I'm pretty much done for the day. Uh, I got uh, my meal cooking in the microwave back there. And uh, before I signed off of here though for the night, just wanted to give a friendly reminder to uh, not tailgate trucks. It can be bad news for you. Um, you never want to tailgate something that you can't see above or around. Case in point, tonight when I was driving to uh, when I got off the exit to come over here to where I'm at now um, there was a car right on my butt right on my ass and uh, I was going 40 45 miles an hour the light in front of me turned yellow and it turned red right as I started to cross through the intersection you know so anyways the car obviously behind me if he had kept going he would have clearly ran a red light and um, I looked in my mirror and he slammed on his brakes in the middle of the intersection and put it in reverse and back back up behind the stopping bar so you know just another just a case or just a clean example of why you don't want to tailgate one of these big rigs going down the road you know i had something and uh, there was another time a long time ago i had somebody tailgate me and i went over a uh a uh what they call a gator in the road which is basically just one of those like a big chunk of truck tire that was in the middle of the road and my truck sat high enough that i knew i was going to clear it and i didn't want to dodge it didn't want to swerve it didn't want to go in the, didn't didn't want to go into oncoming traffic to avoid it so i uh you know i knew i if i straddled it it would clear the undercarriage just fine so i did that and it did it didn't hit anything that's never a good idea though by the way don't if if you can avoid it at all costs go around it because you don't want to risk it hitting an airline or something like that or brake you know well brake line is an airline on these you don't want to risk it hitting an airline you know so don't do it if you don't have to but anyway there was a honda accord right behind me and he was tailgating me going you know the 55 miles an hour or whatever it was there and he wasn't so lucky he didn't see it in time because he was so close to me and nailed it and ripped off part of his bumper i mean did some did some damage to it i've watched it in my rearview mirror and he it disabled his car i'll say that much he was on the side of the road so don't tailgate us give us a little bit of room you, you just never know what might be coming from under the truck or from around the truck that you need to give yourself time for it's not just the stopping of that truck but it's, you know, what you can't see around that truck that you need to give space for. 
So with that said, guys, I hope you all have a good one out there. I hope you, uh, I hope you all stay safe. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get unloaded here and then finish my drive down to Hatfield where I'm going to get loaded and I'm going to get some sleep and I'll get up in the morning and start all this process all over again. So uh, you all have a good one and we'll talk to you guys later, okay? We'll see you.